This is going to be a brief introduction of developing on Nexus with Bubble IO. So for those who don't know me, my name is Amanda. I am a dev here with Nexus. And last year I graduated with a bachelor's of computer science. And shortly thereafter in June, I reached out to Nexus on Twitter and got in touch with the ambassador team and started helping out there. In that process, I was very fortunate to meet with the dev team and in talks of getting to know each other and my experience with coding, I actually started working on some projects with Nexus, one of the dApps I will be talking about today. And then after the progress with that and some other work I had been doing, I officially became a developer in January. So some of the things I do with Nexus, like I said, I help build some of the dApps that we have. I am the primary website coder right now. I am working on two new sites for Nexus to hopefully be out in the future. I do some API work as well. I've been learning kind of the code going through GitHub a lot. I hope to be working on it much more in the near future. And the other thing I do is a lot of social engagement on like Twitter. I help run the Nexus community account now. And I also track a lot of our metrics. So today I'm going to be talking about Bubble and what it is. So it is a no code application building platform. So that way anybody in the Nexus community who's interested in building decentralized applications actually has a resource to go in and do so with the use of our Nexus plugin. So there are thousands of plugins available on Bubble, including iTunes plugins, various maps. Other large companies do have plugins as well. I think there might even be a Twitter one available, but there's lots of different things that people can use to create applications that will be available. The workflows are fairly easy to use, getting it set up to connect with various APIs and make functions work on the applications themselves. And there are plugins available to create easy API connections if you do know the API endpoint for a certain project or company, but if they don't have an application plugin available on Bubble yet. So the Nexus plugin itself, what can you do with it? It is connected to several of our API endpoints, um, being the systems API, the assets, the tokens, the users and much more. So you can create, log in and log out of SIG chains and access most of the information contained on those SIG chains. Get, you can list and get system and account information such as just typical statistics on the current um, API and other basic information. You can create tokens and NFTs on the plugin, which is something I will be talking about as well. And creating sending, receiving, Nexus tokens, and those NFTs. There's also much more that you can do, but as you can see, we published the Bubble plugin last year in July, and it is currently installed on over 375 different Bubble applications. So the first app that I built when I was working with Nexus was for free and equal, which is aiming to bring voting to the blockchain to help the integrity of votes and take advantage of the immutability of assets on the blockchain. So what this application did was created SIG chains as needed because it, for the new users who had never accessed or used Nexus before, they needed to create a signature chain to be able to cast a vote. It utilized Nexus assets, which are NFTs to cast those votes because it created one singular asset for each individual vote, it was immutable, meaning it was unchangeable. And then how it worked was the user created that vote and then sent it to the polls sig chain. So that way you could list all of the votes for each poll and tally the results that way. Some of the resources available for Bubble and how it works. On our website, we do have a supporting documentation guide that walks through the back end of how the Bubble plugin works and how you can set up your own private node so that way you can test on Bubble without having to worry about the use of mainnet because it does create cost nexus to create assets and stuff like that. So we have private nodes and test nets available so that way people don't have to worry about spending Nexus to create assets, create tokens, send them back and forth and such like that. 
And for those who are interested in starting to develop with Bubble but haven't used it yet, Bubble itself has a lot of resources available that people can use through the Bubble Academy and Bubble Forms. So what I'm going to do for the rest of my talk today is I'm actually going to do a really quick demo of how our Nexus plugin works. And I have written out a guide that is available on our website at tech.nexus.io forward slash bubble dash plugin that will walk through basically the exact thing I'm gonna to show today. So if anybody else is interested, they're able to go in and do it themselves. So let's jump over to bubble. So, I hope you guys can see my screen. I can't really tell if you can or not, but this is the basic interface for Bubble. So we've got multiple different tabs over here. Most of them I have already worked with because as you can see, I already have a very simple login page set up, but I'm going to walk through the basics of how to do it. If this were a brand new application where you would see nothing here, you would go over to this plugins tab and click on add plugins to search for the Nexus plugin. I already have it in here, so we don't have to worry about doing that. Oh, my screen's frozen. But if you go back to the design page, I'm gonna just show this so that way you guys can see it. It is very simple to make a small shape like this, a couple input forms, a login button, and then connect it with a workflow. Bubble itself does have an actual login sign up reusable element available. I didn't want to use that just so that way I could walk through it step by step through a demo. So the first thing that you would do is you would go over here to the visual elements tab and you would click on shape. That is what's going to create this rectangle shape that we use for the background. You can say, see, it pops up this wonderful little editorial board that the shape will be on. You can change the color, you can change the type of background, stuff like that. I'm just gonna click on this little blue tab right here so that way it has a blue background. And then I'm just going to rename this to say login two so that way I know which one I'm working with. After you have that shape, the next thing that you are going to do is create a text field right up here at the top to write your login or title of your shape, whatever you want to call it. I'm just going to say login, so that way we show what it is. The style, just click on the heading, and then that way it bolded it, it made it a dark blue, and we can align it here at the center. The next thing we need to do is to create three input fields, so that way users can input their username, password, and PIN. If you scroll down over here to input forms, you can click on the input box and then click and drag to create a field. I'm going to rename this as user2 so that way I know what I'm working with. But right here in the placeholder field, you can change the value to tell the user that you want to put their username here. So you just type username and then it'll update over here. So now the user will know that this is the field they want to put their username in. I am going to simplify it a little bit and just click on copy and paste for the sake of the demo to create two more fields that will be used for the password and pin. The second one here is going to be password. And something that's a great feature of Bubble is if you go to this content format tab right here and click on password, it will not show the password in plain text as you are typing it in. It's going to just show the little dots to be able to redact it, which I think is an awesome feature for Bubble. So then same thing, this one right here is going to be the pin for the user. Username, password, pin. Also enter it as a password content as well, so that way it doesn't show it to the user as they're typing it in. We can close those out, and then we are going to create a button, which is right back up here under visual elements. Click it, click and drag. 
button two, and then we'll just say log in here. You can also change the style of the button so that way it is darker. If you select all of the elements and click align horizontal center, it aligns them within this outer back space. So now we have a very simple element that you can use for a user to log in. If we click on this button again, you would go to this start and edit workflow button. With that click, you will click here to add an action, scroll down to plugins, and you will find users login user, which is what we're going to use here. It automatically fills in with our main net port. So this is where you're going to want to use a real SigChain login. I'm going to be using a demo, so that way it's not going to pull up any other information. But what you would do is go to the username, password, and pin sections, click on insert dynamic data, and we're going to scroll down to user2 and select value. So that way, whatever value that is entered into this those input fields is going to be what is actually passed in to the API call. So we're getting user name, password, and pin values. So now it's going to log it in. What we want to do is save that and somehow let the user know that it does actually log in when they're done. So if we go back to the design, we are going to click on alert. I'm just going to make a very large one so that way we can see it. And we're going to fill in some values here. What we want to do is return something that we know has actually been saved and returned to the user from the API call. So I'm actually going to use the Genesis and the session ID from the login users API call that gets returned back when it does successfully log in. So I'm just going to type hello. Genesis, and then what we are going to want to do is click on current users. Oh, I only did session for this one. That works. Okay. Hello. So right here, it says current user session. How do we save that? So if we go to this data tab right here, you're going to see that in the field types for user, there is a session element already created. I created that field when I started working on this demo. And the way to do it is you just create a new field. You choose whatever you want to add. I'm going to say, let's save the Genesis ID. And I'm going to tell it it is a text value when it is returned. So we now have a Genesis, and we now have a session in the user that we can save. If you go back to the workflow, after your user's login user command, if you click here to add an action, go to data, make changes to thing, you can choose your current user, change another field, and then click on the session equal to result of step one's body session. So the session ID that is returned from user login user is now going to be set equal to the current user session, which will then pop up here in the session ID. So now that we have saved that value, we want to actually pull it up and demonstrate it. So if you go to create another action after your make changes to user, go down to element actions, show message in the alert, we're going to select the alert that it chose. There's two in here because since I already created this demo, it already has an alert available. So we're going to cl click on the new one say hello your session is and it's going to return it. I'll say three seconds. And it is as simple as that. So when I click on the login button, it's going to take the values, save them, pass them into the user's login users call. It's going to make changes to the current user to save the session. And then it's going to show the alert message that we just created here. I'm going to click preview, so it should hopefully pull it up. Here is the original one that I had created, and here's the one that we just made. So like I said, this is connected to the Nexus mainnet, so I am going to use a test one. 
called bubble test. As you can see here, it does not show the password or PIN in plain text, but it is taking the values. You can see there's a PIN here and there's a password in here. So now if we click login, you see this blue bar up here as it is processing the login. It pops up and says, hello, your session is, and that is your session right there, which demonstrates that it was a successful login. It did return a session ID and you were passed it back and shown on the alert when it was all done. That is the extent of the tutorial that I created that is available on the Nexus website. So I think we've run out of time and there isn't really much time left for questions. However, if anybody does have any questions, I am able to be found on Telegram and Slack at MandaCM and I am available on Twitter as well if anybody wants to reach out to learn more. Thanks guys.